Let me preface by saying that I'm immediately going to jump into spoiler territory. In every argument I ever see about Erased, I typically see two sides where people say basically the same things, that being that the ending of it is NTR, and the people on the opposite side of that argument always say that the romance aspects of the series are very unimportant, since this is more about Satoru trying to save people because he wanted to, or just simply cared about stopping a killer that he had the power to foil. Both of those takes are not totally correct though, for some pretty obvious reasons. After having read the manga to refresh my mind on things, I can say with certainty that the romance aspects of the series do have a connection to how the series ends, and I'll discuss why throughout this video. In order to talk about that, I must first talk about Satoru's power and how I believe it to work, considering it's incredibly unexplained and just becomes a powerful MacGuffin that is just forgotten by the end of the series despite it being so important. Because nothing much of it is known, you can only really theorize any information about it because it's just casually overlooked by the writing, as if it's something not important. No one knows how he got it or why it occurs, but I've seen some interesting theories related to it, such as the power is related to Satoru's guilt for being unable to save the people close to him. The only thing you can say with certainty is that the power always activates when Satoru has strong feelings towards something. I believe that it's linked very closely with how Satoru really feels about things, much like many theories about it. Specifically, I feel his power is linked to how he feels about Kaio, and his wanting to save people from the same fate is what unconsciously triggers Revival. The first few times Revival ever takes place, it's just used to show off the powers and make you feel like they just happen randomly and aren't totally within Satoru's control. But as you pay attention to the series, you slowly notice that Satoru does have some semblance of control over it. In the early parts of the series, it serves as a plot device to help him uncork his bottle of memories. As his memories are unleashed and he slowly remembers things that he'd originally forgotten, the nature of the power changes to where it starts listening to his call. He constantly pleads to it when he feels he's in deep trouble, and the power always activates when he gets like this. This is showcased in multiple occasions throughout the series, first starting when he finds his mom dead in the manga, or, as it's shown in the anime, after the police are hot on his trail. Since the power isn't used much after this, you don't really get to learn any more about it than what you can glean just from subtle actions or thoughts racing through Satoru's head. I believe Satoru being reminded vividly of Kaio is what jump-started his ability to directly control Revival, and I feel this is backed up from how him seeing the silhouette of the killer and the situation that he's thrust into being a perfect framing of a crime, much like how the crime related to Kaio and Jun Shiratori was. Those thoughts of Kaio are deep-seated into his mind, and there's plenty of evidence to show this. Hell, you could even argue that the only reason that Satoru went back into the future after failing to save Kaio the first time was because of his unconscious thought of wanting to escape everything, triggering Revival's return. Out of all the people that were abducted and subsequently murdered when he was 11, Kaio was the only one whose face and name he extensively remembers. This sticks out for him having strong feelings towards Kaio because he didn't even remember the name and face of Hiromi, who was supposedly one of his best friends. His repressed mind treated Hiromi like he was just as unknown as the unaffiliated elementary school child that was part of the victim trio. You wouldn't really know this detail unless you read the manga though, because the anime skips over mentioning it entirely. Throughout the series, you get subtle hints and clues to how Satoru really feels about Kaio, and there are several occasions where he admits the different feelings that he has. Early on, around the second time that Kaio disappears, Satoru starts coming to terms with his feelings towards Kaio, but he's trying to convince himself that he only cares about saving her, that he's only crying because he failed. The following scenes after, he's just constantly thinking about her and his failure, but the kind of scenes they show aren't your normal scenes you'd see for someone grieving over failing to save someone. They're more the kind you see for someone longing for something. So many of these scenes I've seen people glaze over thinking that Satoru isn't in love with Kayo, but it's very hard to deny this when the manga gives you so much evidence towards him having deep romantic feelings for her. It's more than the scenes where he questions why he, a 29-year-old man, is blushing because of an 11-year-old child. Those particular scenes are him trying to deny his deep-seated feelings towards her coming back up. 
I'm also not just talking about the scenes where he just blushes out of embarrassment. I'm talking about the ones where he blatantly says what he's thinking about her when he accidentally blurts them out. On several occasions, Satoru makes romantic remarks towards Kayo, such as he thinks that she's pretty. There's even a scene where he is bothered by his mother coming between him and Kayo because he wants to be next to her. He hits on Kayo several times throughout the series, but always tries to brush it off or play it off like some sort of joke, and that in itself tells you quite a bit about him as well. While a lot of his actions can be seen solely as just deeply caring for someone, Satoru goes a step further and is incredibly obsessive about it, even more so than he is with the other people he saves. The feelings that he has towards Kayo are much more intense than anyone else. Everyone else, he stalks and doesn't let them know what's going on. But from the first moment involving Kayo, he gets very close to her and doesn't really shy from his drive involving her. This difference in handling shows that she is the most important person to him, next to his mom. At one point, he stops denying that an 11-year-old girl makes him feel romantically inclined, and his actions towards Kayo feel even more forward and personal compared to before. Towards the end of the series, Satoru starts to, once again, reject these feelings despite him hitting on Kayo throughout the story at this point. This is where things start getting weird, because you can feel that Kei Sanbei was starting to shift the writing in order to try and shove in a retcon near the end of the manga. In the anime side of things, you never feel this bit of weirdness until after the coma. The ending in the manga is just as abrupt as the anime, and I feel it's even worse than that. Why is that? Well... The mangaka puts Satoru into a second coma that just happens for no reason other than to make his memories come back, and that just leads to him losing all of his memories from his original life. To add insult to injury, the re-chapters of the manga, with exception to the second chapter centered around Kenya, are all pointless. These chapters don't tell you anything new despite being advertised as stories that happened while Satoru was in his coma. In fact, half the chapters take place before the coma. Only three of the five chapters included new stories, focusing around Kayo, Kenya, and Airi. The re-chapters have a common theme of the mangaka directly trying to tell the viewer that Satoru doesn't have any romantic feelings towards Kayo, but this is clearly a retroactive change, because it completely contradicts the actions that he took throughout the series. To make matters worse, these are stated by pretty much every character but Satoru himself. To add to that, the chapter that centers around Kayo didn't need to happen, and doesn't even try to build her as a character to get stronger past Satoru's coma. The entire chapter takes place no less than half a year after Satoru becomes comatose, and everyone she knows is trying to tell her to move on, and when they stop, she suddenly has a 180 in character, being incredibly cheerful and showing nothing else. It doesn't even try to develop the relationship between Kayo and Hiromi. The two of them never interact with each other after Satoru's coma, and she just goes to a high school in a completely different city from the rest of the cast, with no hint of even still being in contact with each other. Most of Erased was good, but all of these really awful choices towards the end of the series is very disappointing, and makes you regret following the series if you expected something more of its writing. The actual final chapter of the manga is pretty harmless compared to the rest of the chapters within the ending arc, but it was really not worth trudging through so much bad writing. When the series ends, you just end up feeling awful because the bittersweet ending of the manga for Satoru doesn't feel worth it. Sure, he achieved his dreams, but it's not worth the cost of losing all of his memories from his first life. And that's really all I can say about The Town That Cocked Me. It's a series that ultimately was ruined for me by its writing constantly promising things that it couldn't fulfill, and stubbornly forcing a relationship between Satoru and a character he knows absolutely nothing about. I could probably make another video discussing the morality of Erased and how it gets worse and devolves into a huge mess towards the end, but I really don't want to touch this series ever again.